So you you live in LA? Yeah, so I moved to LA five years ago. Yeah. And I moved to the States seven years ago. So I was in New York for the first two. Whereabouts so in New York were you? I was on 23rd Street near Flatiron. Okay, yeah. nice. So yeah, it was good in in Manhattan and uh, moved with my wife. We've Amazing. been married for seven years. Amazing. Together for 10. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, it was, it's just been really interesting, mate. It's like, did you ever end up moving? Did you ever live in LA or at all or in the US at all? Or have you always been in London? Sort of what we were talking about earlier, I've kind of lived all over the place. Yeah, I've yeah, lived yeah. in LA, I've lived in yeah. New York, I've lived in Atlanta, you yeah. know, I've lived in Cleveland, which yeah. was amazing. Oh, wow. yeah. um, so I I really like spending time in the States. Yeah. We just obviously crowded a room. We did a year in New York. Yeah. We moved to Drybecca. We started off in Midtown. And Midtown for me was a bit of a nightmare. It's where all the schools are. So yeah. I'd come home from work and I'd come outside <laughs> and it's like all the biggest Spider-Man fans you've yeah. ever seen in your life. <laughs> Yeah, it's like the worst planning yeah, it was a of nightmare. All, all so the kids. Yeah. We moved out to Tribeca to this amazing apartment, which was really lovely. We were very yeah. lucky to be down there. But yeah. um, but where? So how do you find LA? I so you know what? It's really interesting because when I I moved to New York first, yeah, and I loved it. I found New York to be just a bigger, crazier London, sure, uh, a bit more intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I love London. I'm a I'm a London boy through and through. I went to university here. My my family's still here. Mm -hmm. My wife's family's here. Everyone's amazing. Here. And so, but, but I enjoyed New York. My wife didn't love New York. And also at the same time, I, I started spending more time in LA for work. And my wife and I just like fell more in love with each other when we were there. And oh, so nice. that's what it was that drew us there. It wasn't really, everyone's always like, oh, was it career? And I was like, sure. to be honest, we went there for a month for work and we rented an apartment because we we're going to be there for a month. Mm -hmm. And we we're living together there and we just loved living with each other there. Home is where the heart is. Yeah, exactly. Right? And yeah. so we were like, all right, we love it here. Why don't we pack our bags and move across? And so Amazing. we went back to New York two months later. We moved over to LA. So it wasn't even, you know, and wow. now we've been there for five years. And the truth is that I, I was really intentional when I moved somewhere. So while I'm building my purpose and my work and my career, which I absolutely love what I get to do every day. And I, I, I could never have dreamed of doing what I do today. I'm super grateful but at the same time, I was really intentional about building community and family. Mm -hmm. And it was like an actual like thought process sure. where I was like, as well as you're always building the people you know at work, you're always building relationships, you're hiring employees and team members and everything. At the same time, I've got to think about actually making friendships because yeah. in London, I've got all my mates. So I've got the, my best man at my wedding. I've been mates with Raj for like 17 years. Like I've got people around me, but in LA, I don't have that. I don't have any right. family, any friends. I don't know anyone. And so I've really made an effort. And now after five years, I can honestly say, you know, obviously not in a wonderful way, but the pandemic did help deepen some of those friendships mm -hmm. because I was stuck with those people. Sure. So I only could go deeper. I made some really good friends. Nice. And so I feel happy there and I feel really connected to my purpose there. And at the same time, I love coming back to London right. and hanging out with my mates. And so I've, and me and my wife made a decision when we moved that we would never say we lived anywhere. We would just be allowed to go wherever we wanted to go. So right. whenever my wife misses London, she's back on a flight to London. Great. She'll come live here for two months and come back whenever she wants. Amazing. And, and it's the same for me. And that kind of like not having a rule around, you know, obviously we're lucky to have that choice. That's an amazing ability. luxury to have. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And But yeah, I, 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 I share the same kind of outlook on it. You know, yeah. I, I couldn't really say I live anywhere. I sort of live where the work is. And when I'm not working, I'm either here or in LA. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm so lucky to be able to sort of call the world my home. I just yeah. go wherever the the wind takes me. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that's glorious. man. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's been good. It's been good for me. It's been good yeah. to me. And and I think because of the work I do, it very clearly lets people know whether I'd connect to them or not. I feel like my work is so obviously one way sure. that it's very easy because not everyone wants this in their life. So it's kind of easy for people to be like, you know, I'm not going to make any effort with Jay right, right, or right. I'm going to make lots of effort with Jay. And so it kind of makes it very easy because my work is me. Do you find because of what you do and your skill set and your experiences and your life as a monk that people unload on you a lot? Yes. <laughs> like, like you might meet a new person and they're sort of saying, well, I'm, I'm feeling this way and I, I would love to try and get to a place of enlightenment. Like that must happen to you a lot. Yes. Yeah. A lot. It can, be, it can happen at the train station, right. it can happen on a plane, it can happen anywhere in the world. Yeah. And do you welcome those conversations? Do you like having those sorts of conversations? So I think... It depends where we are sure, and, and it depends who it is. And I always say to people as a disclaimer that I don't want to give you the belief that I can solve your life in 30 seconds. Yeah, right. 
or that I could ever solve your life for you. Totally. Just to be really clear. that, yeah. I'm, And I always say that to people because people are like, Jay, tell me what I need to do. And I'll be like, look, I just wanted to be fully aware that I'm happy to share some insights with you, but I don't have the power or gift or magical ability right, right, right. to transform your life. And nothing I can say in 30 seconds, I don't even want to take that responsibility on because we should really think about this. Like you should reflect on your life. Like, especially when people are making big decisions where it's like, Jay, should I break up? Should I move country? Should I do this? And I'm like, we're not solving this in 30 seconds. Yeah, like, yeah, please yeah, don't. yeah, this is a bigger conversation. Yeah, yeah. And, and I like people, that takes the pressure off me, but it also takes the pressure off them. Yeah. Because a lot, it's not even about me. This is about the fact that that person needs to make a really important decision. And they're putting all the pressure of their life on that moment. And actually I'm saying, well, let's just take it off. And here's a few things I want you to reflect and think about. Sure. And I know that will help you and you'll figure it out. And so, yeah, I, I welcome them because I appreciate that I don't feel that I'm the one holding space. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that I'm the one who has the power to hold space. I believe that the universe holds space. I believe that energetically that space totally, is held yeah. for others. And I don't feel I'm this powerful human being who's, who's the one that everything rests on sure. and has the answer to everything. And I think right. that's what allows me to be liberated from it. Yeah, nice. Where I'm not like... I also don't put the pressure on myself going, God, I better say the most <laughs> perfect thing to this. <laughs> I better change this person's <laughs> life. life. Yeah, and I can't. And I don't. And I, and I think once upon a time, I probably did feel that way. Like right. when, you're, when you're immature and you're an amateur in your work, you almost feel like you have to have all the answers. Sure. And now I'm like, you know what? I don't. And it's fine. And actually, people really appreciate it mm -hmm. when you just chat to them. And, yeah. you know, and so, yeah. And, and again, you know, I'm, I'm always happy to listen to someone when I can. Obviously, there's sometimes when I'm like rushing late for a plane or yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. I'm trying to get into a <laughs> car are, or whatever. Yeah. And I can't, I can't do it. Sure. Uh, but I always stop and say hello, give of someone course. a hug and yeah, all the rest of, of it. Yeah. So I don't know if that answers your question. but No, absolutely it yeah, does. Yeah, yeah, yeah.